Hey guys, it's Miraline, Delicious Delights. So today I want to do a little chit chat video with you guys. It's been a while since I've made a video like this. I do want to talk about a little bit about what I've been up to lately. Of course, I'll talk about perfume as well. But yeah, I don't really talk too much about personal stuff on the channel. It's mostly, well, pretty much all about perfume, obviously, but Eh, this is not so serious and maybe some of you can relate to what I'll talk about in this video. So today I want to talk about growing white hair or gray hair. So I'm going to tell you my story of my white hair or gray hair. I actually have had white hair since I was a kid. I think around six years old, my mom noticed that I had a few white hairs already. I didn't care back then, of course. I remember my mom even took me to the doctor to ask her about it. And I don't know, maybe she thought it was a serious thing, but the doctor didn't think it was and didn't really do anything about it. <laughs> and so as the years went, I would like grow more and more white hair. It wasn't that much when I was a kid, but as I got older, it was more and more noticeable. And already in my teens, I had quite a bit of white hair and I didn't really like it. <laughs> I would pluck it out of my head I would spend a lot of time doing that when that was manageable and doable. I even had one of my best friends come and like pull them out one by one. That was when I was like 16 or 17 or something like that. And then it got it just got to the point where it was just too much white hair to pull and then I started dyeing my hair. So I can't remember around the time, I can't remember when I actually started dyeing it, maybe around in my, in my early 20s. Um, so I've been dying it since then. I'm now 44 years old. And from when I started dying it till now, it's just been a very, very quick growth <laughs> with how many white hairs I would have. So obviously my hair is, is black now. I, I just dyed it um, not too long ago with temporary dye because I do want to grow out the hair and just embrace the white hair to accept the white hair but it's really really difficult the the outgrowing stage is very very annoying to me because you know when it starts to go out a little bit i don't really pay too much attention it's not that big of a deal i can do things like spray uh something on to for my roots i, I usually use something like this a root retouch it's a spray um, there's one from L'Oreal that I use as well. Uh, it's temporary root cover-up spray, so I don't have to like constantly dye too often. I'll just spray it here, but I don't like it. <laughs> I'll use it if I have to, but you know, when I, whenever I touch my hair, I, it would get I would get some of it on my hands, and it would just be kind of a mess. Um, one of you guys out there recently, uh, a viewer. I recently made a comment about this specific brand that you can use a powder to like paint or put on on your roots which I haven't tried I've always went for this but I'm just not a huge fan of this um, mind you maybe like less than 10 years ago I did successfully grow out all of my hair and then it was like this salt and pepper kind of look which I liked but I didn't love it. Um, I was so surprised with the amount of compliments I got on it though. Like I would get stopped at the grocery store, comments from people while I was waiting for the bus or the train, cashiers, they'd be like, oh my gosh, I love your hair. And uh, I remember one time I was walking out of the grocery store and one girl stopped me and she asked me how I got it to get like that. And I said, that's my real white hair. She's like, no, it's not. <laughs> you did that at a salon, right? I'm like, no, it's not. That's my white hair. Like, And so she was really surprised that, um, that it was real white hair. But yeah, like the outgrow, growing out the white hair for me is 
such a long, long, long process. It's kind of annoying. Sometimes I'm okay with it. Other times I'm not. Especially where it gets to this ugly point to where maybe like an inch in after a growth, after an inch, you get this really harsh line of white hair and then black. And then I try to hide it and, you know, it gets to the point where I can't hide it anymore and that makes me feel... I don't know, it, I think it ages me too and it makes me feel a certain way. I'm just not that happy with that. But um, recently or lately, I have been using temporary dye so that uh, I can grow it out maybe that way. So the temporary dye would last roughly six to eight weeks. And then I can decide what to do. Like, do I want to re-dye it with temporary dye again until that fades? And then I'll do that till all of it is grown out. I mean, that's what I've been trying to do. Maybe you guys have seen my other video, um, the Apom Pour Femme, or sorry, the Apom from Maison Francis Kirkshan. Uh, in that video, I have a lot of white hair. So that's the state it is in when all of the, the temporary, temporary dye has already faded. So maybe at this point, I have grown out approximately that much. Still have a long way to go uh, but yeah it is a process and uh, a struggle for me and maybe one day I'll be able to grow it out completely and I can accept it and feel happy about it um, but with the temporary dye solution with it fading after you know six to eight weeks then I can decide if I want to go in and do another temporary dye until it completely grows out and washes out or I can uh, dye it black again with the permanent dye so yeah that is the <laughs> the struggle of um, white hair growing white hair and I'm curious how you guys are dealing with that if you are um, I think my age demographic is mostly like mid 30s to mid 40s and older so maybe some of you are dealing with this as well. Maybe you don't have any white hair yet, which is really nice. Uh, I'm just curious if you have any experiences or tips or tricks with anything that has to do with this topic, then uh, let me know down in the comments. Okay, so now I want to talk about something completely different, um, about a concert that I went to. So yesterday, the crash test dummies um i saw them yesterday in the hague and i swear i think it is probably my most favorite concert of all time in my entire life <laughs> uh, the main reason is because i just felt so many memories and uh, i felt that nostalgia with hearing their music because uh, the crash test dummies are from Winnipeg. Well, at least the, the lead singer is from Winnipeg, uh, which is my hometown. And then the girl, the woman singing, uh, Ellen Reed, she's from a little town outside of Winnipeg, pretty close by. And as I was growing up, uh, I would hear this band uh, on the radio all the time, and I would listen to the radio all the time. And Wow, it was just such an amazing, amazing time for me. Um, I had to pick out my scent of the day for that. And I wanted to make it very special because I knew that whatever, whichever perfume I would pick, I would always associate it with this. Uh, this band and this performance in this concert. So before I get into the perfume that I chose to wear, uh, just a quick thing. Crash Test Dummies autographed CD I have here. This is the God Shuffled His Feet CD. Um, they played, I think, everything from this album, which is amazing. I think it sold like 10 million copies or something. Uh, this band is very, very popular in Canada. I'm curious if you guys like their music. <laughs> I have been waiting to see this guys for so long. I remember they actually had a concert planned um, 
before just before covid happened and i was so so excited and that was supposed to be in amsterdam uh, i was so excited for that because it would be the anniversary of this album the uh the release let me see here this was released in 1993 so they canceled it because of that time period and so i was really disappointed and then last year when I was in Winnipeg, um, they were also uh, performing, but I couldn't make it. So finally they made it to the Netherlands. They actually have five uh, concert dates in the Netherlands. Yesterday I was in The Hague, that's where they perform. But today they're, they're in Breda. They're also going to be uh, in Hofdorp on the 10th. And I'm going to be at Janet Jackson in Amsterdam on that date. So uh, there's also one in Heerlen, I think. But anyways, yeah, this is one of my favorite bands. And I just, I felt so, so, I felt the feels <laughs> right here <laughs> throughout the entire performance. I thought it was a great performance. It was really, really affordable to go as well. It only costed like 29 euros for the concert which is super super affordable especially compared to you know prices nowadays with other concerts um, the janet jackson concert that i'll be going to uh, in a few days i think i paid over 100 euros um, i really like janet jackson though so i think she's worth it but same thing with justin timberlake i saw him recently um, that was over 100 uh, madonna was over 100 as well. Um, I saw Pet Shop Boys earlier this year and that was pretty affordable. I can't remember, maybe it was around 50. And I also saw OMD. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> the Crash Jazz Dummies, I, I picked up this really cool CD here. And I also picked up a band t-shirt with the same, the same uh, artwork in the front. And there's like um, tour dates in the back and also, I have a poster that they were giving away for free, which I thought was really nice. I would have paid for it if they were charging, but they said if you bought some merch, they would give you a free poster, which is here. There it is. So that's going to go up in my hobby room upstairs where I used to film way back when. I'm not sure if I'll go uh, film there again, maybe sometime in the future. I feel really comfortable uh, filming down here in the living room though. Um, but yeah, my posters in my hobby room upstairs, a lot of them have faded because they've been there for so long. Uh, right now I have a Rocky poster up there and Karate Kid poster and Daft Punk poster. And I used to have a Muhammad Ali poster. I think I took that down. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> Where am I going with this? Yeah, uh, a perfume. So I wanted to choose a perfume that uh, would give me memories of this concert. And uh, I recently made a video about a strawberry scent called Strawberry from Malin and Goots. And I remember in that video, I said that I don't have that many strawberry scents, perfumes in my collection. Um, I have some amazing body sprays from Bath and Body Works that are really great for the strawberry scent board. But for perfumes, I don't own that many. But I looked at the back of my perfume collection and I saw this and I'm like, oh yeah, that's strawberry. And I haven't worn it all year. I can't even remember the last time I wore this. But I actually really like the scent. Um, this is a scent that was a love at first sniff with for me when I first tried it and I actually bought it right away um, immediately and I don't do that often usually I like to take my time and maybe do some sampling more or get a decant or just think about it but I remember when I bought this I was at a store in Paris and I picked up actually another scent uh, this was kind of like um, a surprise buy for me because I really liked it just from my first sniff and it's a very I th like underrated scent I don't know if I've heard anyone else talk this talk about this one in the community but it's from a niche brand called Pierre Guillaume and it's called Mojito Chipre 
So this is from their Crocier collection, I believe it's called. And um, I like quite a few from this collection. I don't actually hear a lot about Pierre Guillaume at all in the community. Maybe, I don't know, it's just not popular. Maybe I'm just missing it. But yeah, I wore this yesterday, last night at the concert, and I fell in love with it all over again. And I remember at the time when I was in Paris falling in love with it and I had to get it right away. I had those similar feelings with this one. I'm like, oh my gosh, why have I not worn this scent in like forever? And you can see even how full it is. I think this is a 50 mil. Uh, I can't really see. I, I believe this is a 50 mil and maybe I've used like, I don't know, mm, few mils in there two or three mils I've used up over <laughs> a long time so yeah this is a strawberry scent and it's a very unique strawberry scent it's a strawberry scent that is so weird quirky uh, I don't even know how to describe it it's just so different from anything else I've smelled and the main note in here is strawberry and also mint. So I have the notes here just off to the side here. I'm going to look on my computer. Just bear with me for a second. <laughs> okay, so this one was released in 2015. Uh, Pierre Guillaume Paris Mojito Chypre. And the notes are mint, strawberry, lime, aldehydes in the top. The mid notes are mojito and rum. Base notes are moss, patchouli, vetiver, vanilla, and labdanum. And the mint note in here is, <laughs> is so strange. And it actually reminds me of that super, super fresh feeling you get when you um, gargle your mouth with mouthwash. That's the kind of minty freshness that I get in Mojito Shibra. So think of that. Maybe you can also think about um, the really strong, intense breath mints, that minty spearmint flavor you would get from that. And specifically, this also reminded me of that freshness, the minty fr freshness you would get from those uh, breath freshener things. I don't know what it's called, but they came in, in these like rectangle, like this, about that size, rectangle shaped film sheets. And you put them on your tongue and you would get like this super, super intense, um, minty, fresh breath freshener thing. Uh, I used to use those a lot. <laughs> when I was maybe in my early 20s. I actually used to be a smoker when I was younger. I quit uh, in 2010, so it's been a long time now. Uh, but yeah, I used to smoke when I was in university and I used to always carry around this little pack of breath mint um, the film, clear film things. I'm not even sure if uh, that still exists. I'm, I don't think I've seen anything like that in the Netherlands, uh, but I'm not really looking for it now. But yeah, I used to always put that on my tongue because like I didn't want to have bad breath talking to people or smoky breath and stuff like that. So yeah, that freshness is just like a big, big explosion of mint and spearmint and freshness and cold feeling like ice almost and when I wore this last night that taste and that feeling it's kind of biting as well that feeling is what I felt and smelled with this scent so along with this super intense mouthwashy breath mint um, breath film freshener things. There's also a dominant strawberry note in here. And the strawberry note smells strange too. Like it's like more of a strawberry flavored candy. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth between that and like some very cold 
cocktail mojito drink with extra mint and maybe even some of those breath mints that has been dissolved in the tonic water and then throw in some super intense strawberry juicy ripe strawberries like real strawberries in there maybe some strawberry syrup as well like a concentrated juice and also some crushed up strawberry candies that's basically what um, I smelled when I wore this last night and <laughs> it was a little bit weird like it's it's a very weird scent but it's so so interesting at the same time it's also very unique as i said and i don't think i've ever smelled anything like this on anyone else also in the concert hall uh people were a little bit close together so it got kind of warm in there and i was sweating i was wearing uh, a sweater that said winnipeg on it <laughs> which was really interesting because i actually got to talk to some other canadians who noticed my sweater and my husband was also wearing the same sweater and it was kind of nice <laughs> to talk to uh, people from canada and specifically there was this one girl who said she was also from winnipeg so it was really nice to talk to someone from my hometown um, anyways, it was warm in there. I was sweating and this scent felt very cooling and refreshing and cold. And it also reminded me of the time when I was younger, uh, when I would always put those breath mints or that film, I don't even know what to call it, um, breath film or freshener, mouth, mouth freshener <laughs> film. Uh, I would put that in my mouth like all, all the time. And that's exactly the same feeling that I would get with this scent, but just not on my mouth. Just it would be on my clothes and on my skin. So yeah, I think that if you're looking for something challenging, very strange, quirky, different, niche -y. Also, if you like green scents, you like mint, you like breath mint scents, um, and strawberry, then maybe you can also give this one a try. Uh, there's rum in here as well. I do get that imagery of uh, a, a mojito with extra mint in there and flavored with strawberry and strawberry candy and ripe strawberries as well. But now after that experience of last night, which again was like so much fun, for me, um, now I have associated that night with this scent. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice nostalgic feeling. I love that perfumes, we do connect perfumes, scents to things in our past, but you can also make memories uh, with current uh, events in your life so that you do connect the two for memories in the future if that makes sense hopefully it does so yeah that was uh my scent of the night last night and this will be going to the front again to my of my collection so that i can be reminded of uh that night be reminded of my hometown where of course all of my friends and family are and uh, that nice fuzzy warm feeling when you hear music from when you're a kid uh, this album i think it was 93 right 1993 album so i was 13 when this came out and i remember really being obsessed with much music or mtv and seeing all the videos and i guess at that age well, for me specifically, and probably you guys too, uh, you're just so much more impressionable with things. Like you are kind of trying to find your way in life, trying to, you know, discover what you like and what you don't like and what kind of style you want to have and musical style and also clothing style. It's just such a, a nice um, time in your life of just discovery and... Uh, making memories and like I love I love uh, the memories that I have from that time uh, and so experiencing that once again last night with the Crash Test Dummies concert uh, just meant so so much to me and 
<sighs> I'm almost tempted to see them again. <laughs> like they have four other shows in the Netherlands. Uh, and um, I can't do the one on the same day as Janet Jackson. But maybe I'm considering maybe trying to catch another sh show to see them again. Um, and again, like their, their concert prices were so, so affordable. Uh, I paid only 29 euros, but the show today that will be in Breda is only 22 euros, which is like unheard of when it comes to uh, concerts prices. <laughs> A very, very, very rambly type of video. But yeah, let's um, summarize here. Uh, going back to the hair thing, the growing out the white, white hair. How is that going for you guys if you are dealing with that? I also know I have some younger viewers that don't have to worry about this yet. But I'm curious how you guys are dealing with that and how you guys have grown, grown out your hair if you have already or if you have some... If you struggle with it like I do, kind of, uh, I would love to hear about that. Also, have you heard about this ban? I'm going to guess that m most of you have. Um, they were also popular in America. And also, I would love to hear which of are your favorite bands that are very, very nostalgic for you that make you feel like you want to cry, <laughs> which is how I kind of felt yesterday. I would love to hear about that. And also... Let me know your scent of the day. Uh, I'm curious always what you guys are wearing and loving. So again, with the perfume that I wore last night, it's Mojito Chipre from Pierre Guillaume Paris. I believe this collection is called Eau, Eau Crociere. And I don't even know if this is still available. It might even be just repackaged in a different design bottle, but this is an older bottle. But now... I love it again and I have fallen in love with it again and I'm very happy that this will now remind me of the Crash Test Dummies concert and uh, I plan to wear perfumes uh, for the next while, long while, that I already own and appreciate them more instead of just like pushing them back and pushing them back further in my closet and forgetting about them because <sighs> I need to appreciate the stuff, the older stuff that I have, instead of always looking for something to buy. But I also really love to discover new scents and try new releases and let you guys know as well. So yeah, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long and rambly video. Thank you for sticking around if you made it this far. <laughs> and I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.